כל מצווה שבתורה, או מצווה, which are Torah obligations, בין עשה בין לא עשה, whether it's a positive or negative commandment, אם עובר עוד המלאך שמיהן, if one had violated any of them, בין בזודו ובין בשקוגו, whether he violated it deliberately or inadvertently, כשיעשה תשובה ויהושע מחטו, when he chooses to do תשובה, ויהושע מחטו, and he repents from the chet, חייב לסבדו סלפני הקל יסבורך. He has an obligation to make a verbal confession. He must confess. How do we know this? How do we know that tshuva only is effective if one makes a confession? Shenemar says regarding when you bring a korban, a man or woman, if they violate the Torah, Torah says, v'svadu es chatosom, Asherosu, they must confess the sin that they had transgressed. Zevi Dudvorim. This is referring to a verbal confession. Vidu Zem Mitzvah Sase, and that's a Mitzvah Sase. I mean, the Tshuva is not the Mitzvah Sase. If one just is Tshuva, that's not the Mitzvah. The Mitzvah is, meaning it only takes on that special value of Tshuva when you. Make the verbal confession, meaning, of course, you have the remorse in your heart and you make the commitment not to go back there, but it has to be expressed verbally. And when you express it verbally, that is the mitzvah saseh tshuva. Let's say a person would just say the words. It's just lip service. Without the remorse, the regret, and the commitment, it's meaningless. Just words. It's lip service. It means that in conjunction with the feeling of remorse and commitment, you must make that oral convert, uh, confession, then you fulfill the mitzvah saseh. Kate Samisvati, what is the terminology? How does one make the verbal confession? Ome on Hashem. On Hashem, please God. Chotosi ovisi poshati. I sinned inadvertently. I sinned deliberately. Poshati, I've sinned defiantly. Whatever level. Lefonecho made this point yesterday. When I transgressed, whether it was inadvertent, deliberate, or defiantly, it was lefonecho. It was in your presence, which brings it to another level of what? Of severity. Because it's lefonecho. Vosisi kach kach. The Ram says you have to articulate the sin. You have to speak specifically. What did you do? Did you speak Lashon Ara? Did you eat not kosher? Did you wear shopnis? Did you not say Kriyashma? Did you not eat matzah on the 15th night of Nisan, which is the obligation of Erev Tochel Matzos? Harinichamti uboshti. I have regret. I'm embarrassed. Uboshti. Bemasai. I'm embarrassed because of my actions. Ulaolom eni chosen doberzeh. And I will never go back to do that again. The level of commitment has to be, I'm never going back. Meaning, what does that mean? Does anybody know if he's never? Meaning, the person, nobody knows if he will ever. But based on his level of sincerity, his level of commitment is not to go back. It's not, I'll do it once in a while. What about a person makes a commitment, I'll do it less, to a lesser degree? Is a maral who explains one of the Yud Gimel Nida Sarachim is that even if a person makes a commitment to not to go back as often, to do it less, Give you an example. Person speaks Lashon Hara, makes a commitment from now on. I'm going to study the laws. <coughs> I regret all that I spoke about, which I shouldn't have said. 
And, but you realize the person doesn't change in a day. I can make a commitment. I'll speak 10% less. But to say, I won't speak any Lashon it's not possible. It's not reality. If you're honest with yourself, it's not a commitment. All it is is words. You're deluding yourself. So morale shows that one of the is when you make the commitment, you're not going back to that, even a percentage of that, even that Hashem accepts. And because you're in the process of tshuva, although you didn't do tshuva on 100%, but since the commitment is working towards the 100%, the 10% is valued that you're rehabilitated. And in regard to the 100%, the 90% that's left, it also, Hashem understands, and therefore, although the person may not have atoned for it, because he actually didn't do the tshuva yet, but there's no claim against him, because he's going in that direction, that ultimately he's working towards the 100%. That's the understanding. But tshuva is, the commitment is, I will never go back there ever again. So whatever area we transgress, I will make a definite commitment for the future, and I'm working ultimately to make a full correction. But again, he says, Nichamti uboshti. I regret and I, I'm embarrassed. We said the Chuba is lefonecho. Chotosi lefonecho. I've sinned because part of the Chuba is not only that you did the wrong thing, but how did I do the wrong thing before Necho? When we speak before Necho, automatically, what does that evoke? That evokes shame. I'm ashamed of myself. If a person just says, you know, I ate something wrong. Let's say a person ate food that was tainted. And he gets sick. The person feels he's a fool. I mean, it's not, you're not embarrassed. The whole concept of embarrassment is you're embarrassed in front of someone. So we talk about boshti. I'm embarrassed. But if it's just the, you cross the line and you did something wrong, it's your conscience. Is it because the person says, I feel stupid? I acted foolishly to myself. How can I be such a fool? It's like a person makes an investment and he does do his due diligence. And he loses the money and he did something foolish, irresponsible. He's ashamed of himself. They're the word ashamed. It's not talking about a friend. Nobody has to know about it. In terms of the way he sees himself, he's feels ashamed. But over here it says, Uboshti Masai. Since we, it's Lafonecho, then we could appreciate what Uboshti is. I'm embarrassed that I behave this way in your presence. That brings it to another level. The Ikro Shel Vidui. And that is the core of the Vidui. That's the confession. Saying whether it's deliberate, inadvertent, defiant, I have remorse, I'm ashamed, and you articulate the sin. According to Rambam, you have to articulate the sin. You just say, I sinned. I regret for being a sinner. It's not enough. You have to identify, articulate what the sin was, whether it was Kashros, whether it's Lashon Hara, whether it's Shabbos, whatever it was, whether it's acting, lying, you didn't say the truth. You have to articulate it. And one who increasingly confesses and he says it in a more lengthy way, meaning through his words, he's expressing his feelings, his remorse, his commitment. This is something which is praiseworthy. Now, if we're saying now, it's not possible to correct something in a moment. If you spoke and you weren't careful, you didn't even learn all the laws, like the Chofetz Chaim writes, to do proper tshuva on Lashon Hara, very often we say things we believe we're permitted to say it, and it's a mitzvah to say it. If actually, because we don't know our Lacha, not only is it not a mitzvah, we're actually, we're sinning. So you have to learn the halachas. You can't learn the, the laws of Lashon in one moment. 
it's over a lengthy period of time, and you have to re- retain all that information. So what's eighty chosav the olo? I'm not, I'm not going back there. I will never speak lashon hara again, or many things. There's certain things that are permitted, certain things that are not permitted. It depends on the context. The Chavetz Chaim gives an example. A person is a wealthy man, and he spends a lesser amount for Shabbos. And the person who speaks about the wealth man says, look, look what the man is spending on Shabbos. So somebody says, how can you say something? How can you speak negatively about the person? He says, what do you mean? I don't even spend what he spends. I spend a quarter of what he spends. But he's a wealthy man. Doesn't make a difference. But if that statement is something critical where it has no constructive value about the other person, that's Lashon Hara. You have no right to say it. According to what you spend because of your financial status, it's admirable. Because you can't spend more. But the other person, what are you pointing out? He's a wealthy man and he's spending as much as I'm spending. So that has that negative connotation to it, which has no constructive value. What's the point? So if you study the laws and understand that many things we delude ourselves, and we just a person to another example, Chavitz Kham says, gives. A person says, you know, the man doesn't study all day. He had his, he could study all day. So how do you say that? He says, he studies endlessly more than I study. I hardly study. Because you don't study, you have no right to speak negative about the other person. It has nothing to do with it. What does one thing have to do with another? That's bona fide Lashonara when you say the other person doesn't study where he could study. What's the value? What's the value of that statement? It's being critical, which has no constructive value. That's Lashon Hara. You're not supposed to say it. So all these laws, the Chafetz Chaim, very often, he gives us examples how due to our lack of understanding and due to the Yitzhah where he gives us these waves of seeing it, which are wrong, it's bona fide Lashon Hara. But unless you learn the Halachas and you understand the way they're fleshed out, you're not touched by it. And you're going to cross those lines. So any Chosel Olam can't mean from this point going forward, I'm not going to speak Lashon Hara again. Unless you're fully proficient, adept in the laws, it's not possible. But again, Nichamti Uboshti. I regret and I'm ashamed. That shame component is a very important component. Busha. But what's this idea? It says, Uchola Marbe Lisvado Sumarich Binyin Zeh And the one who increases his level of confession and speaks in a more lengthy way to articulate the wrong, you're praiseworthy. What is it all about? We learned to Rabbi Yon and Shari Chuba, there are many levels of Chuba. He gives an example. If you have a garment that's soiled, that the soil is so embedded in the fiber itself, and you soak that garment in water, there's no question, you soak it for a while, a certain degree of that uncleanliness will go into the water. But if you take that garment and you add chemicals to it, detergent, and you rub it in the water, you rub the material together, then you not only, by soaking, you take uh, the le- the unclean will come out, you can extract uncleanliness from the core of the fiber. The more we agonize, the more we feel ashamed, the more we regret that shows a greater degree of what of not wanting to have ever gone there. It brings about a greater level of rehabilitation. The Gemara tells us that Ruvain, because he switched the bed of his father without his permission, when Yosef was sold, where was he? He was with Sako Bitaniso. He was in a sackcloth and he was fasting. I mean, how long do you do you have to fast? How long do you have to do chuva? Ruvain understanding the severity of that sin, I'm pained. I cry for a day. He was literally immersed in his sackcloth and his tannis and his fasting. It's not a one, two, three. Person, God forbid, has a very serious operation. Takes him a year to recover. But the operation was a success. It may have been a success, but there's the recovery period. Person sins, if you understand the effect 
and to what degree you've been impacted negatively, to be able to rehabilitate yourself, you have to undergo a tremendous amount of therapy. Without that therapy, you don't get back to yourself. The ongoing remorse and sense of embarrassment and conscious, and you're pained by it, every bit of that is part of the rehabilitation process to restore you back to where you've been. That's why the more you confess and you express your feeling, your shame, and how did I ever do it, that increases the degree and the value of the effect of that shubach.